All right, hello, Fight Insight fans, viewers, and listeners. I'm your host, as always, Timmy B. This week, second week in a row, there's been some uh, scheduling issues. So my guest co-host for the day is going to be coming in a little bit later, same as last week. So hopefully my guest co-host makes it before my guest leaves today. But uh, before we start the show, as always, I want to thank my partners over at Magic Mind. Go check out magicmind.com and use code FIGHTINSIGHT20 to save 20% on your order. It stacks. Uh, before we do start the show, I do want to say a shout out uh, thoughts and prayers to those in the Maui suffering from the Maui fires. That is a crazy tragedy. I do know that, uh, you know, there's a big MMA community in Hawaii. There's a Bellator fighter that we all know, Ilima Le, uh McFarlane. She has a fundraiser that is going on. You can actually, I'm going to put the link in the show notes. If you can, if you're able to, whatever you can put this podcast on pause right now, go over there and support in any way you can. Right now they've raised up to like $3 million or something like that's crazy, but shout out to them and all the people there that are helping support that. Please do that. Now we will get on with the show and I will introduce our guest in one second. Here's my normal co-host, Rain, ringside Rain Cruz with the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Fight Insight Podcast. Right, our guest today is the founder and CEO of Sucker Punch Entertainment. Established in 2007, it is the most respected and established athlete management and marketing company in all of mixed martial arts. Managing the who's who of fighters with champions represented across all major organizations, this man can be seen wherever you go. More than a manager, he seems to be a true friend to the athletes, and so it is an absolute honor to have him here on the show. Everybody, please welcome to the podcast... Mr. Brian Butler. How you doing, man? Thanks Hello, for having sir. me. How are you, Brian? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Should I call Working you away. Miss Should I call you Mr. Butler? No. Brian, <laughs> uh, Brian people uh, everywhere, when they heard that you were coming on the podcast, they couldn't believe it. They say you are the nicest guy. Uh, I had nothing but great things come in for you. Uh, and it's funny because I think you really give off an air of just being a great guy. There's a podcast network that we're a part of. It's called Rageworks Podcast Network in New York. And the owner of that network said, holy cow, Brian Butler, he's the greatest. And I said, oh, do you know him? He goes, no, but he just seems like the best guy. So uh, just so you know, you have a very good reputation on your hands. Oh, I mean, that's good to hear uh and 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 flattering i'm i'm, I'm glad you know because a lot of managers don't <laughs> no and i thought uh, yeah and i thought it was funny because on your uh instagram it says what what does it say it says something which i thought was pretty funny at the bottom of your instagram or like on your profile it says i'm the one that didn't slither through the grass to get here yeah yeah uh when i first got into this sport i i didn't I guess I didn't know what I was getting into, you know, I didn't realize that, uh, that it would be so slimy, you know, um, and that kind of caught me off guard. I almost actually almost left the, left the business because of it really early on. But, uh, good thing. My, my good friend, Jeff Curran kind of convinced me to stay and, you know, it was ended up being one of the best decisions I ever made from a career standpoint. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here and, um, glad to have been able to do it the way that I've wanted to do. No, I think he might've blacked out if he's getting a phone call. So, yeah, might've been getting a phone, phone call. call. Yeah. 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 And, and, and not be, uh, you know, and, and do it basically just do it my, the, the way that I wanted to and not be shady. Yeah. Yeah. No. And uh, so I'll tell you, you know, like normally we ask people, you know, to introduce themselves and who they are and stuff like that. But I think a lot of people generally know Sucker Punch Entertainment in the industry and in the business, right? All around the world you are representing people. The, with the last few guests that we've had, we like to play a little bit of a game with them. We do various games. And so for you, I've got a game. I've got four questions. My co-host was supposed to ask you the questions. It would have been funner if she did it. But uh, I'm going to ask you these four questions. And these are from uh, your athletes that when they saw that you're coming on the show... They, uh, they, they gave me some stuff here, Brian. So, okay. <laughs> this, the is, this is cool. So we'll see what happens here, Brian. The first question, see if you can get this right. Who is the best looking Canadian bantamweight? 
Oh, that's, that's Josh Hill. Josh Hill. <laughs> there he is. Too handsome. This guy. He is a uh, he's a former friend and guest of the podcast. Uh, yeah, Josh Hill. He's a cool dude, and I'm very happy to see he represents Sucker Punch now for Canada. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we had a, a good talk over this uh, last trip. Um, you know, kind of getting him, you know, on the runway for his post fight career. And uh, yeah, he's he, he's somebody that I'm proud to have on the team. I've been proud to to manage him now for all these years. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to him, uh, you know, kind of migrating over there when he when he decides to hang it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, he is still kicking ass over in Bellator. He got screwed on the weekend. That's that was bull crap. Uh, but he's the greatest dude, man. He is a great man. I I think that he, you know, for your image and your company, I can say as a Canadian, he represents Canada very well. He is a gentleman in all aspects. Like I said, we've had him on the podcast. He's a great dude. So I, I really like that matchup. I feel like that's a great uh, fit for you. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I've, I've gotten to know him uh, much better over the last, actually over the last year. Um, honestly, we, we, and, uh, yeah, I feel like he's a good fit for our brand and he'll yeah, represent yeah. us well. So that was something nice that was said about you. And now let me get to the second question here. When asked about you, this man and former guest of the podcast said, Oh, Butler, he's a good guy. He has made my career so solid. He's more than a manager to me. He is a friend. That guy has been there for me when nobody else was. Who do you think that is? Who? Um, gosh, I <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it... think think back to all the Fight Insight podcasts you've watched, all the guys that you've watched. It is Mister Killer, the Predator. Oh yes, yeah, Mister I mean, Daniel yes. James. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Yeah, Daniel's great. You know, uh, <laughs> it's Daniel weird James. because I could have felt like that could have been a couple. <laughs> well, there, no, but see, but there you go. See, when Daniel James said that about you, I'm like, well, this is going to be very hard for Brian to guess because, again, that's the image you put out there. Oh, well, yeah, that's oh. that's cool. And, and yeah. Daniel's great, man. He's he's. I Daniel's tell you what, when you work for when you work for someone that is appreciative, um, that supersedes any amount of money that the person can make. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I tell that to my athletes all the time that uh, your biggest currency is appreciation and uh, and working for someone like Daniel is, uh, you know, he's he's got that in spades for sure. No, he is. He's a good man. And hey, if you ever want to set up that predator versus predator boxing fight like he wants on the, on this podcast, he <laughs> said he wants Nganu in boxing, set that baby up. Yeah. Uh, here's one that maybe is a little bit not as nice there. We asked Mr. Hall of Famer, Jens Pulver. We asked him for the most embarrassing or funny story about you. What do you think Mr. Jens Pulver said? Gosh. What's the worst thing that he knows about you, Brian? About me or... <laughs> Or a story? I mean, he's not talking about the SpongeBob bathroom incident, is he? No. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to play you his audio recording of what he said, okay? Before you incriminate yourself too much. Okay. Here we go. Here, let's, let's see what Mr. Jens Pulver says. All right. Yeah, I have an entire... No way. Yeah, I can't do that to him. I can't do it. Mr. Butler is... Oh, Brian... Yeah. <laughs> No, can't see how I start laughing right now. Shit. I, nope. I'm going to let him do his own thing. I love that, man. That, that, yeah, no, that's my dude. <laughs> <laughs> he would not sell you down the river. That's uh, well, I mean, Jens and I have been, Jens and I have been through a, quite a bit together. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't know which one story that he would pull out. So yeah, yeah. You can save <laughs> the SpongeBob story for the next time you're on this podcast, Brian. We'll, <laughs> we'll have that next time. Uh, That's all you have to say to him. He'd know. He'll know. He'll know. Uh, here's here's the last question. We'll see. I feel like you should get this one. This person is a two time guest of the Fight Insight podcast who is impatiently awaiting her second Bellator fight. She wants to know where the hell her, is her fight, Brian Butler, and Jennifer. also. Oh, you didn't let me finish the question. It's like a Jeopardy <laughs> sign in. It is Jenna Bishop. The the last part of the question says. 
uh, she should have been cast as BJJ Barbie in the Barbie movie. You already said it. Boom. There I mean, is Jenna that, I mean, Bishop. It, did, it didn't take many hints. She is... She's definitely on my ass for her next fight. And I'm it's, doing yeah. the best I can. Yeah. It's, so, uh, so let's get on with the interview there. You know, as a manager, how tough is it when you have fighters that can't get fights? Like what's, you know? I mean, that's obviously always the the stressful part of it. You know, there's this, there's the one side of it where they're a prospect and you're trying to get them built up and get them to a big show. And then you think, okay, we got them to a big show. We can breathe for a bit. Then we get them to the big show and nothing changes in their head. The true fighters, they just want to fight. It doesn't matter. So, right. you know, um, and, and, you know, sometimes there are just things that you, it's just the way that the, the sport is. Sometimes it comes in droves and sometimes there's times where they're sitting for a bit. And, you know, with, uh, with the situation with Jen, Jenna, um, there's obviously some, some things going on right now with Bellator and, and uh pfl that have caused some um things to kind of slow down um, some confusion for sure i wouldn't say it's confusion i mean it's just their business behind the scenes uh you know i i i'm not privy to all of it i know some of what's going on but again it's it's their business but i do know how uh, a large transaction like this could be and i could understand why there could be some holdups on things so that doesn't help jenna that doesn't help a lot of right. the fighters that are on the roster, but, uh, you know, they, they want to fight. And, and right now we're, we're looking at getting, uh, Jenna back on the, uh, <laughs> getting Jenna back on the San Diego card, which is, is that Bell tour 299 or 300? Oh, or do man. we know who knows? It, Anyways, yeah, I've, I've, I've honestly, I've got, I, I, I've, I've got to look at my spreadsheet, and I can't pull it up right now. <laughs> now you are a manager, so I mean, like you, you hear and see things, and like you said, you're trying to get fighters, you know, placed all over the place. In my opinion, and again, I don't know that the world knows that PFL for sure is buying Bellator, but that generally seems like the, the, the thing in the air, right? That you're alluding to. It sounds like that's what's going to happen. I think so. I don't know. Yeah. You know, like nobody, nobody really knows. So like, but that's, that's how. If they do, if they action. do, and I know you, you're saying you don't know, or even if you can't say, but if PFL does buy Bellator, do they keep it two separate organizations or do they merge into one? Honestly, I, I wouldn't know. I can't, no, can't speak on it. I don't know. I, uh, I'm not going to put, put anything out there that I'm not yeah, yeah, yeah. sure of. So i that, that's the thing. Nobody, nobody really knows. I'm saying keep it separate for the simple fact that it gives more people, more places to go. Like PFL can't be running two events a week. So to me, it's like, I'd rather fighters have more options of places to go, but. I, I, I would agree. I would, I, I would not want to see Bellator go away. I think Bellator yeah. has established its brand and it's uh yep. It's a it's a reputable brand in the sport, and I would hope that it doesn't just go away. But again, I have no insight as to what is going to happen, so we yeah. just have to wait and see. All right, and hopefully we will hear Jenna Bishop fight news soon. Yes. Yeah, she's mad, Brian. She's mad. Oh, I, I, I know. Mean, I'm in the, I'd, st I'd stay away from her if I were you. <laughs> she, she's feisty but hey she's gonna take it out on the next opponent that's for yeah, sure yeah it's it's bad news uh yeah we love her um contract stuff i wanted to touch touch your brain on this or pick your brain on this with the wonder boy issue right that, i thought that was really funny so wonder boy thompson makes weight you know his opponent does not he chooses in you know depending on how you look at it i think intelligently he says hey i'm near the end of my career i don't want to fight guys that are way overweight blah 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 if it's only three pounds well then cut your three pounds he, he does some good pr stuff there then there's a whole issue about money and uh he's you know he says i haven't been paid anything now of course dana then kind of comes out and says hey this dude gets paid a flat quarter of a million so we can't just pay this guy a quarter of a million for making weight Dana makes some reference that, hey, we'll negotiate some sort of amount for uh, his fight camp kind of thing or costs like that, or we'll do something for him, but we're not going to just pay him. Internet dummies are all over the place on this. 
In your opinion, as a manager, should this be something that's put into the contract, perhaps, for fighters to say, like, hey, if your opponent doesn't make weight, here's a contracted amount that we'll pay you. So it doesn't have to be so awkwardly public right now. You know, I, I, I guess so. But, you know, I've never really run into a, the situation like this. So I get and, and oftentimes, you know, you, 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 you don't you're, you're not aware of it until it happens once. You know what I mean? So right, right. I don't know the details of Wonder Boy's contract. I don't know if it's a flat purse or a it show. It sounded and win. like it. It sounded like it was a flat two fifty, and that was the problem. Right. So, like I said, I and, and I've never run into a situation where I've had an athlete uh, choose to not fight because a fighter was grossly uh, overweight with a flat purse. You, you know what I mean? Right, so there's right, a lot. Right. Of, yeah. There's a lot of different variables there. I mean. Usually, you know, what you would think would be that you would you would get your show purse, but I guess he doesn't have a show purse, so opens up the, you know, conversation of figuring out what do we do, you know. Yeah. And how do you and how, how do you calculate your 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 camp costs, you know what I mean? You're like, "Well, I ate three pieces of chicken that day and two, right? Like it's got to be some sort of round number, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I, you know. my, my 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 thought would be like you know typically a show person and a show and win is half of half and half. So, you yeah. know maybe they maybe they give him half of if he's got a flat purse maybe they give him half. I I, do, I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. I don't like speaking on other athletes. Of course, of course. Stuff because I know nothing about what they've yeah. got. Yeah, but uh, in your opinion, three pounds as a manager, and you've seen it all the time, three pounds. Where do you stand on that? Do you say as a manager, hey, look, man, take the fight. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You could stub your toe and get I, an injury. I, I'm, no, I'm never going to tell an athlete to take a fight if they're not comfortable and if their coaches aren't comfortable. I always tell the athlete that whatever uh, you know, they and their coaches decide, that is the that is the route we'll take. Even when it comes to accepting an opponent, I'm not going to you know, push it there. You know, right, nobody right. knows the athlete better than themselves and the coaches that train them. So if they feel that it's a good matchup and they want to take it, then great. If they feel they want to take the fight, even with the weight miss, then great. If they don't, you know, three pounds doesn't sound like much, but if the guy was sweating his ass off and was still three pounds off, that suggests that he's going to come back really, really big. You, yeah. You know? yeah. It, like, yeah. So, so while three pounds doesn't sound like a lot, 24 hours later, it could be a hell of a lot. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I sympathize with the fighter when someone's that far along in their career as well. And they're trying to make sure that they get the longevity out of their career with them and, and maximize it when they're towards the end of it. Yeah. You know, I, I could, I could understand being, being cautious. Um, yeah. So, and, and I think, like I said, I don't know, but I would have assumed that they would have thought like, Hey, we did our job. We showed up, we're going to get paid. So I just, yeah. maybe that made them make help make their decision a little easier. Maybe if there was some, I'd, like I said, I don't know what communication happened prior yeah, yeah, to yeah, it, yeah. but you know. All right. Two, two more quick questions. Cause I know you got to go and I want to rush through first question. How many people's Twitter passwords do you have? And how often do you tweet on behalf of fighters? I actually do not tweet on behalf of any of my fighters. Um, Boom. That's the right answer, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do not I do, do not. that. Too many people are uh, uh, accused of that, so I'm happy for that. Uh, next question, very quickly, is uh, you know you have Mr. Jamal Hill, who's in a beef with Ariel Helwani. That has been very interesting for me as someone that loves the sport, but also is doing a podcast of my own and seeing how that happens. You know the relationships that I try to form with fighters and things like that. Uh, the, I'm not going to ask you your opinion on that overall, but does that beef then translate into fighters perhaps under sucker punch but just or maybe just jamal's friends saying hey look i'm not going on that show anymore how does that work out do you get a sense of that no you know i i if, if jamal has a beef with ariel then that's up to jamal on how he wants to handle it in the future you know with with going on you know i i've known ariel since you know, I, I remember way back in the day when Ariel was just this young, I don't know what he was, he was a, a journalist, but he, he was, he was not Ariel of today. And I remember telling him he, he was, you know, he was probably going to be something in this sport because he, the way he handled himself at the press conferences and stuff like this was way back like WBC days. Nice, nice. Um, can you hear my dog barking? Yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, okay. Yeah. 
Um, Sounds like a big but, boy. But, uh, you, you know, um, I would also not tell any of my fighters that they can't go on air or show because, you know, he's, he's one of the bigger outlets out there. And if you want to get some news out there, he's, he's, he's a great outlet for it. And, 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 you know, kudos to Ariel. He's, he's, he's built himself into that position. So, you know, my hope is that obviously everybody gets along, but for, for whatever reason, there's a a rub with those two. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to mediate the situation, but at the same time, I'm not going to put myself in a situation to have, beef on either side and and, and obviously I'm, I'm going to support my my athlete's decision nice no i love i love hearing it uh mr brian butler i know that you've got to go one last question i'm going to ask you it's a question that i ask all my uh guests on the show my mother used to ask it to me all the time growing up mr brian butler on a scale of one to ten how happy are you how happy am i yeah uh i'm i'd say i'm probably I hover between an eight and a 10 on most days. <laughs> very, very nice. All right. That's good to know. I would think with someone of your stature and stresses that it may be uh, difficult, but I'm glad that you are finding happiness. Well, I mean, it's stressful. You know, um, this business can have the best days and it can have the worst days, but uh, I do, I do always try to look at the bigger picture and, you know, think about how fortunate I am to be able to make a living uh, doing something that I'm passionate about, even though sometimes that passion has uh, elements to it that can just eat parts of your soul. But, you know, the good, the good outweighs the bad for the most part. And I'm, you know, I'm always grateful that I'm one of the few that is able to do this in the manner that I do it. And so, uh, I always keep that in mind, man. I'm always trying to look at the the better side of things. Even when, even in the lowest points, that's what gets me through because I know it's just cyclical, you know? Brian Butler, it was an absolute honor and a pleasure, pleasure to have you on this podcast. I've, I've been, I look up to you, man. Uh, similarities, you've got comics on your wall behind you. I've got comics on my wall behind me. You're half Asian. <laughs> I'm half Asian. Uh, oh, really? My, well, what are you? I, my, uh, my dad's from Hong Kong, from Macau. And my mom's I used to Canadian. live in Macau. Did, yeah, see, there you go. My I wife was, I was she, born in Kowloon. Yeah, very nice. And my wife, when she saw you, she's like, wait, you guys kind of look the same. I'm like, yeah, because we're both halvesies. Like, you know, <laughs> we got that handsome halvesy look. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the podcast, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure. You're, I, I did want to let you know, because sometimes people don't know, your athletes speak so highly of you. In, in all honesty, I spoke to so many, not one bad word about you everything was glowingly about what a good guy you are so i think you should really be proud of yourself for that and and everything you've done in the business thank you so much Uh, the fans uh love you man and uh i hope one day we can have you back on the podcast please tell all your sucker punch entertainment fighters to come on the fight insight podcast i I, uh, I will man and and i'll tell you right now this is uh this was a great interview i've i've I've, i don't do too many but you know um your 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 questions and your your format was 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 really well done so yeah it was a pleasure man thank you thank you so much all the best to you have a wonderful day take care you too, thanks bro. brian thank you bye-bye Bye. all right my co-host did not show up uh while mr brian butler was on the the interview i was getting stuff coming from her that she was unable to show so i'm going to tr- end this podcast now but we're going to see if i can't get her on and uh, if I do, I will loop it in here and you will never know that this was said. A few minutes later. And just like that, it's magic. Here we are. We just finished the interview with Mr. Brian Butler. And if you're on audio only, you won't see. But boom, right there is my guest co-host for the day. She made it. It's a day later, but she made it. Ms. Here Jeslyn, I am. Jeslyn Michelle, the wrecking ball. How are yes. you? I'm awesome. Thank you for letting me come on. Even if it's late, I would, I was really looking forward to coming on to your podcast and that's not that common to feel that way. Mm, Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm so happy because I've been looking to have you on for so long. And then uh, the last couple of weeks I had, I I was absent a co-host. So I was looking for people and you answered the call, which was so awesome yesterday. Kind of, yeah, yesterday with Brian Butler is a little bit weird with the schedules, but you're here now and we can end the podcast with some good topics of discussion with you. And I'm so happy. Yes. to have you. Thank you. I like that you use answer the call because I want that to kind of be what I represent because I am 
I'm super motivated. I don't want to say eager because it seems like it's a little desperate, but like I'm excited. I'm excited to be part of the part of things and part of things that I love. And like I said, your podcast seemed exciting and is legitimate and you seem hey. really cool. So thank hey, thank you so much for saying that. That you don't have to lie so quickly on the podcast. <laughs> but uh I do want to say before before we get into everything, I normally do this after the guests leave. So I do want to say thank you so much to Mr. Brian Butler. If you're here because of Brian Butler, please do follow and subscribe to us on our uh, socials and on this YouTube channel. Leave comments and all that. Uh, Jeslyn, you missed it. But Mr. Brian Butler, he seemed to warm up to me by the end of it. So I think things went good. I, I think it's good. I think I will soon have champions on this podcast. I will soon have Jamal Hill. I know it. You won him over. Okay, I'm, Jamal, I'm yes. Jamal is the man. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, we'll see what happens. But, you know, we have tons of uh, guests that come on this podcast that are from Sucker Punch. And there was something funny that's happened. So this is the day after the podcast uh, that I recorded yeah. with Brian. People listening to this, it was like 10 seconds ago. But uh, we talked about how one of his fighters, uh, she's a flyweight in Bellator, Jenna Bishop. She had submitted a question saying, ask Brian where my fight is. And he says, oh, like we were looking. She messaged me today and says she got her fight. No way. So that's cool. Fingers crossed. It's all contracts are all signed. But she says, hey, it happened. And I'm like, I think it's because I talked to him on the podcast. So Jenna Bishop, Definitely. welcome. We got we made it happen. We made it happen. I'm so happy. Uh, Good job, I did, Jenna. I think that that's cool because like sometimes, especially someone like him, he's so busy. He's not going to be able to like. He probably gets hit up by all kinds of fighters, like oh. people wanting fights. And so it just goes through you. It's it, it's a good little connection you've yeah, provided. It's, it's positive energy. We're manifesting it into the world. Uh, mm -hmm. I will give a shout out to some friends of the podcast. We always do this, Jeslyn. And from now on, you're a friend of the podcast. So we're going to update people on your doings all the time. But <laughs> I will say... Good. Uh, thank you to Rageworks Podcast Network. They're in New York, rageworksnetwork.com. We talked about them with Brian as well. Caitlin Katniss Neal, she fights for the PFL August 18th. So good luck to Katniss. This race, Friday. Ra this Friday, race three fingers in the air, like Hunger Games style for Katniss. Uh, 1FC, Friday night fights on August 18th, the same day in the morning for us here in the West. Celeste Hansen, she was the winner of uh, Road to One. She's a Muay Thai fighter. She fights on the 18th, so good luck to her. I do want to say Marcus the Maniac McGee. He was a friend of the podcast, came on. He kicked ass last weekend at UFC in his second fight, got fight of the night bonus. Uh, no, performance of the night bonus for his performance. Knockout. Yeah. Beautiful, Marcus. It He's was awesome. I never man. watched him before, but that was cool. He's crazy. Do you know he made his UFC debut on like three days' notice? Wow. Like, Even more uh, impressive. Yeah, it was like a couple months ago he did it. And then he came on the podcast right away. The nicest dude. I mean, he's a family man. I think two or three young children. He's just a, like a sweet guy. Yeah. yeah. But so cool for him. So I'm so happy for Marcus. Congratulations. And the best news of all for a Friends of the Podcast update, uh, two-time guest of the podcast, Alexa Culp. She um, is an MMA fighter. Her boyfriend Isaac Delgarian, he made his debut at UFC last weekend and he won his fight. But that's not the most important mm -hmm. part. Jeslyn, the most important part, Alexa announced she is pregnant. Oh. They are having a baby. So congratulations to Congratulations. Alexa. Oh my goodness. Power couple. Wonderful. Power couple. That baby is going to be born with a blue belt. It's just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Both parents are killers. So congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Jeslyn, uh, for those that don't know you, tell people, who are you? Who is the wrecking ball? Jeslyn is the wrecking ball. And I got that, I got that moniker from my first sensei, my first jujitsu coach up in Sacramento, Jamie Hara. And when he told me that, I was like, is that an, an insult? And he's like, well, that or battle, battle, battering rod. The one that knocks in the door. Battering ram? Okay. Yeah. Red battering ram. That's right. He's like, yeah. well, that just doesn't sound as good as wrecking ball. So I think wrecking ball, I'm like, okay, but is that an insult? Cause what does it mean? He's like, you know, when the doors unlocked, but you just kick it in anyway. And nice. I'm like, well, that's not a smart thing to do. And he said, you know what? You'll learn how to open the door the easiest way as you go along, but you can't teach someone that, that gumption just to like wreck it, wreck it inwards. So he nice. was complimenting me 
in that way. But hopefully I have a little more finesse and technique now. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And so you are a former professional wrestler or you're currently still professional wrestling? You know, you could take the wrestler out of the ring, but <laughs> I'll always be a professional wrestler. Nice, um, nice. I still do Love it. little gigs here and there. Huh? Cool. No, that's cool because my my regular co-host for the last little while is Rain Cruz. Shout out to Rain, who, hmm. Ringside Rain, she's an announcer, a, a ring announcer for formerly independent wrestling shows, like small wrestling shows in the California sure. area. Yeah. And uh, now she's doing it for MMA organizations as well. And she is my regular co-host. So uh, I really want to get you on with her. And one day I'll have you back as like the featured guest of the podcast, not just yeah. a co-host because we'll talk. But yeah, like you guys share the pro wrestling. Uh, That's awesome. Love. I think announcing like that, it, it takes a lot more skill than people realize. I mean, everyone just thinks Bruce Buffer does it like super easy. But when I would do those independent shows, there were some announcers who were terrible. And then you get oh, one that's amazing boy. and it makes a whole show. And it's like yeah. on that, on the small independent level, you don't just don't get it as often. So I'm sure she did a great job. She's awesome. And uh, can I tell you, it's not just the small shows that need help. There are some big organizations that I am shocked sometimes when I hear the announcer, like, I apologize if you're that guy or that girl, but sometimes yeah. they are, they are not very good. And I'm like, well, who, who do you know that you've got this gig? Because exactly. There's a skill like, to do, it. Exactly. Do they not realize that? Do they not know that they don't have it? Like maybe the organization is desperate because it isn't easy. It really is no. not. No. And like, yeah, you got it. You got to know how to do your thing. Uh, next week on the podcast, we have Derek, the cat Clark. He's the co- founder of Fight League Atlantic in East Coast Canada. He runs an organization out there, FLA, and mm -hmm. they do MMA, jiu-jitsu, and all that. He's coming on the podcast next week because they've got some more shows coming up in September. And okay. uh, I, I am going to do a business proposal that I go out there and commentate for the show and Rain be their announcer for at least a few Ooh. of the fights, you know? We'll see, yeah. we'll see what I can... We'll see what I can finagle in for us. You know, fingers like crossed that. to that. I think yeah, you yeah. get it. Thank you, thank you. And then if the rain has that, you know, resume and reputation, why not? We love female exactly. announcers. Yeah, it's very cool. And maybe I'll book you a fight there. Would you like? Uh, do you want me to get you a title fight there? What's going on? Absolutely. Let Done. me. Uh, yes. Done. I just I just have some paperwork to fill out to allow mm. myself into Canada. <laughs> oh, we can sneak you in, no problem. Our border is very un <laughs> insecure. Uh, Jasmine, we'll just, we'll just, is it really? It. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. It's, we're They've fine. turned me down twice. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know your crypts of your criminal record, Jesslyn, but I don't, I mean, you know, we'll see, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's fine. It we'll, will. It will. Yeah, and I have to, yeah, I have yeah. to get it taken care of anyway. It was over 15 years ago. Oh my God. Okay. Is that like About. a real story? Is that a real bad story? <laughs> I, I was a teenager. Um, kind of, but I just, <laughs> Right. The first time I learned about it, even though I thought it was expunged and handled, I was trying to drive to Alaska to go to a pro wrestling school. And uh, they kept me there for three hours. And then I told him the story. And he's like, all right, I want to see you pro wrestling on TV. Just get to Alaska. Don't stay in Canada. And I was like, okay. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so just well, I hope he saw me on TV because I, I was an extra on SmackDown and Raw numerous times, more than I can count or remember. Nice, so, very cool. Did. Oh, very. They didn't very get the contract for WWE, although they did fly me out for a tryout, and they said they liked me, but they didn't have a spot for me or a character for me, and that's all right because mm. that was when I first started jujitsu and started MMA, and I am far more in love with MMA. Right? I yeah. mean, don't get me wrong; they're totally different. But right now, yeah. I want to do MMA. Well, it's funny that you say that, and it's a beautiful segue into one of the first topics that I wanted to talk to you about when you say that they are different. Uh, our good friend, Jorge Masvidal, he was yeah. quoted, I'm going to show you this here on screen. He was quoted as saying, if the shoe fits, wear it. I'm very busy, but if the compensation makes sense, then let's do it. If WWE wants a savage like me, sign me up. I'll go over to WWE and domesticate those guys. I love fighting. If I go to WWE, I'll put a hurt on them every night. I'll torture them. I'll make life an effing hell for all of them. No one can beat me. Jeslin, I'm very worried that Masvidal does not know it's scripted. 
he well um <laughs> kayfabe we got to maintain kayfabe here. oh i'm sorry if you don't, know, if you don't know that term yeah. <laughs> look it up but yeah. uh i i like his um his promo right there i would yeah. love to hear him say it yeah. but it is not like you think i mean it's i, I still i the last time I did a pro wrestling show was maybe last summer here in LA. And then this year I just haven't been around. Oh, I had two fights this year. So I've been kind of busy, but I still get more nervous before pro wrestling fights than any MMA fight, except <laughs> my first awesome. MMA fight. That's crazy. Yeah. Just be, it just because like with fighting, you you've drilled, you've trained, you want to beat this person's ass. You want to not get hit, you know, maintain distance. There's the principles that you know to do to win the fight and do whatever it takes to, to hit and not get hit and, choke them out or whatever pro wrestling is that maybe but a lot more because there's a lot more audience interaction there's a lot more right uh, keeping yourself safe there's a lot more big keeping the other air. person safe too like right right oh sorry sorry nope i will edit that part out don't worry I got <laughs> no 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 please do what you do do you, <laughs> i just can't edit. say because i'm involved wait do you think but I yeah have the you, you know do you, wait do you, think you don't want people getting edit? majorly hurt yeah no yeah. no don't worry about it it's kind of <laughs> funny everyone knows but i you know it's like a joke right right like, okay, me, but, okay i can't yeah but hold on okay so but maz okay well on an aside note i did see maz vidal uh at in AEW for a while when they were doing the stuff with I think American Top Team he did he did go in the ring for AEW a few times and he gave some flying knees to people he's good like he has the skill he's got the look so I know he can do it um yeah but but run-ins are the best so he did oh, he did like yeah. a cameo run-in type thing but to yeah. build the match where it tells the story and right. storytelling itself is a skill but this is telling a story not with words but with movements like a dance and that requires an understanding and practice it's a craft it's 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 definitely a craft is what i call pro wrestling whereas fighting is like an art it's just a little bit different yeah. so a run-in is great and I do kind of remember, I didn't watch it, but I do kind of remember seeing his name there. And I did, I don't keep up with fighters trying to get into pro wrestling, but that's good because I think that when they get a taste, they realize it's a little bit different than they expected. Yeah. Because learning how to fall flat on your back or jumping up in the air to fall flat on your back, they're like miniature whiplashes. It's like getting rear-ended oh, yeah. from the back of your car um, at like 20 miles an hour, I think they said. It's not easy. And I mean, yeah, you fall down yeah. and do break falls and jujitsu or fighting, but it's more of a roll and you're trying to get back up. Like this is you, someone lifting you up and slamming you. Yeah. So, no, it's, cra you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it is crazy. I do look forward to him doing it. If he can get into it, I would be very happy yeah. for him. Uh, I don't know whether his UFC contract would prevent him from doing it. Hopefully not. Cause he did the AEW stuff anyways, but I hope he, I hope he can do it because I would love for him to transition and I feel like he's got the look, he's got the personality, he has that overall character. I, I just, yeah. yeah, I think he could do it, right? Like, would you, would, are you happy when you see MMA fighters transitioning into it, being a pro wrestler yourself? Yes, but mostly just to see them not be able to laugh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, here's here's the thing it's a different type of toughness. That's the, that's yeah, just the bottom yeah. line. It's a different type of toughness. Like, uh, um, a, a wrestler will get a bottle smashed on his head and be gushing blood, but have to finish the match be for the sake of entertainment, for the sake of the show. Whereas in fighting, the, the you know doctor will step in and be like, "Nope, calling it." Right. Or yeah, yeah. or the fighter be like, "Oh, I can't do it." Like I've seen more wrestlers finish their matches, broken arm, broken bone, just for this, literally for the show. Not because yeah. they're trying to win. I mean, you know, yeah. it's whereas uh, maybe a little bit less often um, in fighting, even though I know fighters have done that too. Yeah, yeah. No, but I know. It's sort of their why is different. Yeah, no, exactly. But I, you know, I like seeing Masvidal do it. I guess that's the point like that I just wanted to say is like, hey, Masvidal's there. He's looking at it. It seems to be in the future. And I would love for him to do it because I think I, I could see great yeah. things for him. If he's given up fighting, which I, it seems kind of maybe he has. This yeah. would be the way to I think go. it's a it's a great it's great place to ref, to fulfill your need for 
you know, the fighting, because it's obviously pro wrestling and the moves came from martial arts initially, but yeah, right. you just got to step into more of the acting and improv and. Yeah, it's just, it's very cool. I want to yeah. see it. Yeah, I just want to see it. Um, now. Everyone was surprised how well Ronda Rousey did. She, everyone's like, yeah. oh, it's Ronda. She, but she, her debut match was awesome. Yeah. She had I, a lot of heart. Yeah, it's amazing how some people are able to go over and do it and and be successful and do well. But because it's it's a yeah. lot. Like it's got to be your personality. You have to have you you got to be able to sell yourself as a character as well as be able to perform. Yeah. So, but I would yeah. love to see it. Masvidal is out there. It's a possibility. Now, well, I hope to see him. Yeah, and I think AEW is a good op op opportunity for him. It's a better yeah. option, I think. Yeah, they've already set things up for him too because he's been there before. So. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, did you watch that BKFC fight I sent you? Did you watch it? The Bryce I Hall didn't one? Get to the no? Okay. Uh -uh. So there's an influencer named Bryce Hall. Do you know who that is at all? No. Okay, neither do but I. But he was in that fight. So there's this influencer. I have no idea what he does. I was I was kind of hoping you would know who he is because I'm like, I'm not researching this. But <laughs> so he's some Sorry. young kid. That's why. That's why. He's some, it, it, it's more it's more real when we both have no clue who this guy is. And that yeah. just shows like how weird this world is, right? There's these guys that have like right. millions and millions of followers and no one who knows who this is. So I know, isn't that crazy? Kid. It really is. So there's this kid. Meanwhile, you and I are like the coolest people on the planet. You know what I mean? And I don't, this podcast isn't getting millions of views. Uh, <laughs> not, not yet. So um, this kid, Bryce Hall goes to BKFC, which BKFC is insane. It's, it's crazy for you to do this. Right. Yeah. So he goes in and he fights this guy, G Perez. Do you know G Perez at all? G Perez, G E E. Mm -mm. I just want to make sure that in case I say anything bad, you're not offended. So, no, I wouldn't be offended anyway. So this guy, G Perez, who looks pretty cool, man, this guy looks like he's going to kill this kid and he's cutting the promos and saying like, I am going to destroy you. I'm going to cut your face. I'm going to, I'm going to punish you. They go in and start the fight. And immediately the, the influencer kid kind of gets a knockdown on him, but it's kind of like he kind of just rushes him and pushes him down. Okay, fine. G Prez gets up and you can see this fight on YouTube. It's free. So you don't even have to do anything on the bare knuckle uh, page. I'm going to watch it right after this. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to. So then they get into a bit of a scuffle. Guy is kind of picking him apart a little bit. The influencer kid grabs him and double leg takedowns him, which is really weird. But what's even weirder, yeah. Jeslyn, estimate how many times have you been on the receiving end of a takedown, double leg takedown? In training, a, a lot. Like a million times? Yeah. You know what I mean? Countless. Yeah. 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 He, this guy, Guy Perez, gets up and he's, oh, my neck, oh, my, like really playing it up that his neck is like busted. And I'm like, I've never seen anyone take so much damage from a double leg takedown, yeah. you know? And he's really playing it up. The camera doesn't show any replays that seem to suggest anything. Then they keep fighting. And then all of a sudden the Gi guy has his arm go limp. I don't know what happens. The camera doesn't explain anything. The commentators don't explain anything. And he suddenly like got like a limp arm. It is the weirdest thing ever. He goes into his corner. He comes out for the next round. He's essentially one-handed. And he's still fighting. And then that round ends. And he doesn't come out for the next round. And he quits. It is, huh. the, it is the weirdest fight I've ever seen. I don't know where this guy got the injury from. I don't know why the double leg takedown hurt his neck so badly. Jeslyn, yeah. it would, I mean, if there was some shady business, I pray there's not. And I don't think BKFC yeah. would be behind it at all. But like, if there right. was some sort of shady business, it was the weirdest thing ever. Just strange. Hmm. That is strange. Thank you for uh, telling me in detail yeah. about that since I didn't get to watch it because that is fascinating. And I, it's, that is, so the only thing I can think of, because I have had shoulder issues that came from my neck. Um, and then sometimes the neck would create this numbness and tingling in my arm. So 
one uh, yeah, time yeah. I hit my head and it pinched it and it sent the shock down to my arm and I couldn't move it for mm, 10 seconds. But my neck was sore for a long time and that kind of contributed to my shoulder issues. Anyway, that's the only thing I can think of. But with a double leg takedown, I mean, what did he do? Not did he, like, like, did, like how head. did it get? Yeah. You know what? I mean, you, you could. Are, you're genius. Are you a, are you a medical expert at all in your training? I have he- sustained so many injuries. I've learned so much. <laughs> I know. But I've seen right. all kinds of therapists. I, right. I'm just giving the benefit of the doubt, you know, who knows, but, um, yeah. who knows? I just don't see how a double leg could hurt the neck like that necessarily, I, but maybe he's not a grappler type and doesn't know what it's like to get taken down and did something stupid. Like there's the stupidest things right. that can happen. You're, you're okay. But I uh, think, that's I the think, only thing I can think of. I think you have, may have hit the nail on the head here. I think maybe he got like a pinched nerve or something and it might've like, numbed his arm or something like that maybe yeah. that maybe, maybe that's how it all fell into place because meanwhile jeslin i'm here conspiracy theorist tim and i'm like fraud fraud he's throwing the fight for this influencer kid like what's going on like i'm so upset that there's some shady stuff i that mean that's probably highly stuff. likely too but i give people the benefit of the doubt just because i'm a little too optimistic and i don't think well, i get taken and- advantage of but i definitely have been proven wrong that people are not in it for the right it, genuine reasons full of integrity but sure i'm gonna try to pretend that they are at first yeah um so i'm sitting here and i'm thinking like god dang it this is fraud like this is crazy we need to investigate this i did see one video though that i'm going to play for you that really turned really turned the tide for me for this bryce kid though which now makes me think okay it might not be fake because i'm like for him to say this was pretty cool. And so I'm going to play this quick okay. video of uh, Mr. Bryce Hall. And this is after the fight. He's t- This is after the fight. He's won now as a result of this weird injury. And they ask him, yeah. do you think you were going to win this fight if not for the injury? And here's his answer. No, I, I, I wouldn't have won that if that went the distance or anything like that. He said what he was going to do. He's going to cut my face up. And he did. I injured him. So I got lucky. pretty cool right yeah i think that was a very he nice honest answer i liked it yeah yeah he seemed pretty excited too like it was unexpected um i can't wait to watch it i can't wait to watch it yeah, <laughs> yeah the, those parts but wait didn't if he double legged him in the bare knuckle fight oh yeah no that's totally illegal <laughs> right. So why did this? I don't know how the rules are in that. Like, did it's, they did was, he just get points taken? No, no. They're just like, oh, this is an influencer kid. He doesn't know what's happening. Let's just stand him back up and let's go. Like, it was, it was, really? you know, well, it was like, I think they were kind of like, you know, they, they got into the clinch. He, he talks about it after he goes, yeah, I was, I was getting punched or something. So I just, I just took him down by instinct. I guess he's a, you know, I guess he's mm. a college wrestler or something by thing. Now, oh, mind you, it doesn't matter sure. all the, it doesn't matter all the, history you have i mean you got to know you're in a boxing fight you can't do that but it's not like he picked him up and slammed him or anything like you know he just yeah it is true instinctively if your body's been used to that then it's going to do that yeah so that was the thing but anyways very interesting if you know who bryce hall is and if you're a fan of his leave some comments down below because i have no clue who this kid is uh but i just thought the kid came out there kudos to him i mean Geez, Louise, taking an MMA fight, I feel, is less dangerous than going out and taking a bare knuckle fight. I agree. And he's a pretty boy. Like, he's a good looking kid. So, like, <laughs> the, the chance of you getting shredded up were pretty good. Uh, good yeah. for him. But yeah, so crazy that people are doing that as like something for fun, you know? Boy, oh boy. Yeah. That is not... And he was fighting a guy who's like a legit BKFC fighter. Like, he wasn't fighting another schlub. He right, was, he right. Was taking a legit fight, so it was pretty crazy. But uh, that is very, really crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, good for him. I can't wait to check him out. Yeah, check it out. Check out the fight. Uh, what else is going on here? So, any what is news with you? You won your fight recently. Was it a month ago now? Yes, Almost a so month, month and thirty pounds ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what is um, uh, congratulations? First of all, 
amazing. Thank and, you. And what is the plan for you moving forward? What's the plan for your future? Well, I want to comment on that fight because um, it was so magical because magic is real, right? It's just energy. So everything that exists is because of our thoughts and our um, words. And all I know is the fight I had before that, which was my first loss in five amateur fights. And it was my third professional fight. I had a loss to something really ridiculous that not even black belts get me with, which is a rear naked choke that was on the side. I actually felt comfortable when it happened, but that whole camp, the whole camp leading up to it, I was just not in my mind. I couldn't focus. I was distracted. I wasn't um, on my like daily practices and the fight really displayed how my fight camp went. Oh, my weight cut was terrible. I, it was challenging. It was the hardest weight cut. Um, but then I, I, I lost and there's, I never had that kind of feeling. I wouldn't, I don't want to like be all dramatic, but it's a different feeling. It sucks. And, uh, it's funny because I could have been, had the fight go the exact same way, but had, a had, um, won it maybe like that first round been the same and then somehow I won it. Right. But People had to comment on the first round, which I was winning. I lost in the second round. I was winning the first round, but people commented on it as if that had something to do with my loss. But if I won the fight, they would have loved that first round for me. It is just, it's always like, if you win, everything you did was great. If you lose, you could have done everything better, which is true. But like, sometimes you just, sometimes they just get lucky. Right. And yeah. I, and I think that that was lucky because I wasn't prepared mentally so I had switched gyms and I was still new to my new gym. I didn't really feel settled, but I got to extreme couture after that fight. And I felt way more focused and way more motivated because of a loss. And I got this new fight and I had the most amazing camp and these, the coaches there are just phenomenal. I feel like what I've learned this year at extreme couture is what most gyms could teach me in over a year. So that's only several months at extreme. I feel like I've learned a year and a half's worth. And it's yeah, it's just, it's, it's a high level and I'm glad I wasn't there earlier. I just would not have been ready. It would have been far too high level for me, but now I I'm ready. So um, everything that happened in this recent fight in Las Vegas was everything we drilled and everything I envisioned. My manager and coach said everything they called I did, which I'm actually an excellent listener. I love listening. I listen to podcasts. I, I learned by listening really well. And I don't remember hearing them. I just probably turned it to where I dial in. I also have a hypnotherapist that would give me the key words that my coach uses and sink that into my subconscious so I can envision what I'm doing when I hear those words, like Pablo's dog. It, it's very <laughs> effective. And so it was just too easy and beautiful. So now people are like, oh, well, she wasn't that challenging of an opponent. She had over 50 Muay Thai fights. Like right. she's not, she wasn't weak by any means, but she was scared. And I could sense that like there's something mentally that wasn't there, but mine was. And that's really what it comes down to. I think the fight that I lost, um, they did a good job at keeping their fighter, my opponent away from my, where I'm strong is, is usually in presence and mental. And the fact that they didn't let her see me at all where I could like flex my nuts and like do what, you know, <laughs> intimidation things fighters do. They kept me from doing that. So I didn't have that little leg up. Even when I was across from her in the cage, um, usually we make eye contact and that's like really important. Like when you're staring at each other right before the bell rings and someone looks away, it's never been me but they didn't let her look at me at all. The bell rang and then she turned around and we went in. So there's like really cool, but not cool for me because I don't like it. It kind of threw me off, but really cool like things that you learn uh, about how strong the mental element of it, of it is, right? So this last opponent wasn't a chump, but she was scared and I don't know what she had going on, but I guess she retired after the fight. Um, I just thought it was really cool that I felt so certain in my practice that it, it, my muscle memory just took over and did everything that we 
trained. And awesome. what's really cool is the last time I was in that venue was a few years before. And this is just how all over the place my life is, which is a good thing. But thanks to martial arts, I've learned some discipline and focus. Um, the last time I was in that venue, I was go-go dancing a gig for New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> well, from go-go dancing to kicking ass, that's the, yeah. life of, that's the life of a wrecking ball, you know? Like that's right. Just, just smashing things, man. Uh, no, I'm really happy for you, you know, and I do think people often say when they're talking, you know, how nerds talk all the time online, they're talking about goats and stuff like that. And then if you throw someone out with a loss, they're like, oh, it can't be a goat because they're, you know, they lost. I always prefer to see people who can come back from adversity. And I feel like that is such a yeah. better judge of character, such a better test of character that I always appreciate people and I'm so proud of them when they're able to bounce back. And it's not just in fighting, it's just in life, you know, like you get knocked down, right. you gotta get back up. And I feel like that it that's more a judge of someone's character than if you go undefeated, if you have a silver spoon in your mouth your whole life and you don't really have to overcome adversity. I think that that's just such a big thing. So I'm so proud of you for that. Like, uh, yeah, I saw that you were undefeated mm -hmm. leading up to that one fight and then you bounce back. So it's amazing. Yeah, and not just bounce back, but bounce back with, I felt for the first time, which is a goal with pro wrestling, I felt for the first time I was flowing, like I was in the flow, the term, yeah. you know, and, yeah, and I always state. wanted to find that with everything, even pro wrestling. Pro wrestling is, is still a challenge to find that, but this was an easy fight as I did that. Yeah. It's incredible. So, okay. So then what is next? I'm glad that you're there. You're at Extreme oh. Coach here. What yeah. is What's on Thank the horizon? You. What is next? Well, my manager said that night he was contacted by three other promotions to have me fight. And I was like, I don't want to think about it. Right. And he said, no, we'll talk about it another time. But I knew, um, and I was really happy it worked out. I knew I wanted to go to the biggest motorcycle rally in the world because it's something yeah. that I hold <laughs> dear to me, which is Sturges is my fourth year nice. going. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah. um, I initially went the first year I've always wanted to go, but I ended up being able to get a job there. Um, and then it just became a job every year because it made me the boss and told me to bring my girlfriends. So I was just bartending with my girlfriends, <laughs> but now, but also the boss, but anyhow, um, I knew I wanted to go there again and run the bar. And, uh, I just came home from that. I'm exhausted. Hmm. It was fun, as always, and uh, got to ride a motorcycle on my own for once. Nice. So now I'm going to talk to my manager and see where we're at. I'm staying in L.A. to train at another awesome gym, Black House, while I'm here. And that's mostly because Vegas is unbearable in the summer, and my animals can't – they can't go outside. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep training – keep in touch. I need to get in touch with my manager and hopefully get a fight in this fall. Okay. Um, before this year, oh, actually it was after my first two pro fights last year, we were talking to Bellator about 145 and they were interested and they offered something, nothing official. Uh, um, so I think we're supposed to reach out to them, but we'll see. Yeah, well, I just knows? got back, so I have to catch up. Yeah, like who knows? Because with Bellator, I mean, I tried to squeeze it out of Brian Butler at the beginning of this podcast, but I was asking him, I'm like, so is Bellator gone or what? He he definitely kind of hinted that PFL is buying them 100%. Buying them. And and that he has no clue whether Bellator is going to remain in existence or not. But Exactly. Fingers crossed. Uh, Be Brian and I were both saying we hope that they keep Bellator as a separate entity because it's I an think, established yeah. brand. It, it, it gives fighters more opportunities, right? Different, more organizations to fight for. So it would be wonderful. But uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you broke up on me a little bit. I couldn't hear that last part. No, no, I apologize. Go ahead. You were going to say something. Oh. Is the audio bad? You're frozen. All right. This thing, this, this system I've been using has not been fantastic of late. I don't know what's happening. Sometimes my mouth, it's like moving, like in the audio is a little bit off. I apologize to the viewers and listeners if it is. Can you hear me now? Are we okay? I can hear you. Oh, you froze. Now you're unfroze. Now I can hear All right. you. All right. 
Okay, yeah, I didn't want to say anything about the Bellator because I didn't know, but that's what I had heard as well. So that's kind of why uh, I was just waiting to get in contact with my manager. I'll probably call him tonight now now that I'm motivated and home and with energy. Uh, but, yeah, I, I hope I hope I stay separate too. Yeah. Uh, like, who's, well, who, like, it's great to have these options, but if the options are one, you know, merge into one, then you have less options. Like, they had their own um, unique way about them like every promotion does right yeah we've always heard the positives and the negatives of both organizations of the different types of contracts that bellator or ufc may do so or other organizations so yeah there's there's i mean hey there's lots of opportunity for you as well one fc is coming over to western the western market so maybe one fc is in your future we never know i don't know if you can hear me i apologize jeslyn yeah. I don't know if you can hear just, me. I can hear you now. What was that last? Okay. Was last I, was, I was just I was just saying that one FC might be an option too, because as one FC mm -hmm. maybe fills the void if Bellator goes away. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Just but the just rules like, are a lot different. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to knee some people in the head when they're on the ground. Yeah, you got to practice. It might be fun. Yeah, it will be. Do you know? Do you know? It's funny. I'll, I'm going to end with this because we're running deep into time. But one of the things I find that when people are fighting at 1FC is that they'll have the person on the ground and I feel like they forget they can knee them to the head. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm watching it and I'm like, yeah, you don't really train guy. it because you don't want to hurt your training partners. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, Jeslyn, I'm going to end the podcast here because maybe if our connection is getting bad. So I just want to say, Jeslyn, Michelle, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you for saving me and being my great guest co-host. I can't wait to have you back. I'm going to have you back maybe when I have better connection. I'm so sorry. But, um, you know, it's been great to meet you. I love being able to talk about the different things that we were able to talk about. I wish you all the best. We will continue to follow your yeah. career forever. We will tell the fans, viewers, and listeners all about you and whatever's happening with you. I have your Instagram at the bottom. It's at bodyslammingqueen333. Go follow Jeslyn Michelle on Instagram. Jeslyn. Thank you so much for joining the podcast. I'm sorry, the connection is bad, but if you can hear me, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I can't wait for the next one. All right. Take care, Jeslyn. Bye-bye.